Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester from the state of Delaware, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. For your starters, can you tell us a little bit about the state of Delaware or the agriculture in it? Great. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think a, a lot of people don't realize how huge agriculture is in the state of Delaware. Um, we are in the top 10 of producing poultry in, in the country. And uh, actually, we always uh, say that we have more chickens than people in our state. So poultry is very important. Uh, also, soybeans, watermelons, peaches. Even we used to be the peach state before Georgia was. And so uh, Delaware has a lot of specialty crops, as well as 99% of our farmers are actually family farmers. And so it's a big part of us. And uh, it was one of the reasons why it was important to get on the Ag Committee for me. And for you, for, for being a member of the Agriculture Committee, I'm interested to hear in, in your first term in Congress, what are some things that you're hoping to accomplish as a member of the House Ag Committee? Well, first of all, I was really fortunate to get on the committee. I was actually the last one uh, selected on the Democratic side, and I really put in a plea with the leadership that it was important to my state. Uh, overall, it's about an $8 billion economic impact, and as I said, I, I always see agriculture as urban, rural, and global. So for me, just being on the committee was important, but I also wanted to be on the committee because it's bipartisan. It's one of the, the places where you can see people work together across the aisle. And when I even ran for office, one of my intentions was about bringing people together because the only way we're gonna get anything accomplished is if we come together. So first, I feel blessed to actually be on the committee. Uh, secondly, I'm probably, we, we looked back, we had the Congressional Research Service do some history on how many members from Delaware have served on agriculture. And I'm only the fourth person in, in our history to serve on the Ag Committee, and the last one was 120 years ago, which is huge because Delaware, we, we are known for how important it is to our state for those who live there. Um, but I, I think a lot of other people don't realize they think of chemicals and they think of credit cards and, you know, th those kind of things. But they don't think of Delaware as uh, a farm state as well that has agriculture ties. So my one of the big goals is that the farm bill is coming up. And so to be at the table and to be able to participate in the, the shaping of the Farm Bill is one of my major priorities. Um, I'm interested in everything from organics to biotech, uh, as biotech, horticulture, and research is one of my subcommittees. And I'm also interested in our land-grant institutions, making sure that they stay strong and vibrant and keep us as a country ahead of the curve as it pertains to research. So those are some of the, the big areas, the Farm Bill, uh, looking at biotech, our land-grant institutions, and then the issue of food security is also important as well. Now, there's something that's happening not just on the Democratic side, but on the Republican side as well. There's just fewer members of Congress that have production agriculture in their district. Yeah. And as a member that has both production agriculture and the urban centers that uh, might rely on the, on the nutrition assistance and, and rural areas do as well, how do you think you can bring the perspective of both the production and the consumption side of things to the Ag Committee? That, that's a great question. I mean, I feel like Delaware is a microcosm of the country, um, both from the fact that we have farms and beaches and our urban areas as well, um, but also the diversity of, of our people. And so I think I bring that to the committee, the idea that you have to balance many different competing priorities. Um, it's not just focused on this piece, but you know, you gotta look at the whole, the whole landscape. So one of the things I did recently was do a tour. It was my, my chicken tour. And I started at the hatchery, you know, with the eggs and then went to the chicks and then went to the poultry processing plant. And it was important for me to see all of those steps of the process and how everything that's involved in that, everything from the environmental aspects to the workforce aspects of it to the nutrition and, and even automation. And so um, I, I feel I'm in a unique position. Uh, I, I think people are surprised at how excited I get to talk about ag, but it is one of the most exciting things that connects all of us. So. Uh, I, I think I'm in a unique position. 
The other committee that you serve on here in Washington is the Education and Workforce Committee. Correct. Uh, what are some things, what are, what are your, you know, your headline issues when you, when you walk into that committee room as well? Well, I, I come from a background that was focused on jobs. So for me, it's almost like being at home on, on that committee. Uh, I served in Delaware as our Secretary of Labor. Um, I served as the head of state personnel, so responsible for the hiring, firing, training of state employees, um, and then also worked at a university setting and also at a nonprofit. And so one of the things when I was running for office, we kept having a mantra, when Lisa goes to Washington, we all go to Washington. And part of that to me is that being on these two committees, I get to represent all of Delaware. Everybody's concerned about their kids' education and whether public schools are good, and everybody's concerned about college affordability and can their kids not have a lot of debt at the end of the day. And then our workforce, it's the lifeblood of small businesses and large businesses. And so I get excited and passionate about the issues of career and technical education, apprenticeships, anything that breaks those barriers to access to jobs. And that even includes people transitioning from prison, you know. Those kinds of issues make our economy strong. So I see education and workforce and ag as the two parts of, you know, of my state that makes us strong and also makes our country strong. You know, you mentioned career and tech ed as well as apprenticeships. There's also this conversation going on in the country about are we sending too many people to four-year colleges? Right. Should we maybe be considering things like tech schools uh, right. for, for building trades? And even I know there's also a lot of people that go to a, a tech school or trade school and yes. then end up in production agriculture. Yes. Do you think Congress could be doing more to maybe emphasize the ties between career and technical education, agriculture, tech schools, things of that nature? Definitely, definitely. One of the areas that I focus on here in Congress is the future of work. And that also entails looking at the future of education and how we educate and how we prepare young people and lifelong learners like myself. So you look, I was just at a facility this week where instead of it being a four-year college, they do, it's called Zip Code Wilmington, and they actually teach people coding. And folks that had like $26,000 salaries, you know, after that training program come out making almost three times that amount. They don't, it's not a college degree. They come from all different backgrounds. One was a truck driver, another person was a retiree from DuPont, and they learn a new skill and are hired immediately by companies. And so to me, it's about being quick and nimble and responding to the labor market needs so that we are productive and then training people in a way that that really fits their need. Not everybody wants or needs to go to college. Some people do, so we need to make it affordable. But for those who really want to focus on something, we should make it a, 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 their ability to do it. And part of that, too, is I think a lot about our family farmers in Delaware. Um, one of the concerns I've heard from people is that they're afraid that they won't be able to leave that farm to their young family members. And so as I talk to farmers in our state, and see how they're using technology, you know, it makes it interesting and exciting to recruit people into the field as well. So to me, it's about building a pipeline, but it's also about recruiting and maintaining that, that strong workforce and those strong family farms. Not just family farms, I can't, can't just, even though 99% of Delaware farmers are family farmers, it's, it's all the whole industry. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you personally here okay. for a second. You mentioned your, your previous experience as, as Labor Secretary, Health and Social Services Secretary, mm -hmm. also spent some time on Capitol Hill, right. as well as working for a think right. tank. So you've kind of bounced around a lot of different right. areas, either directly doing public service or kind of public service adjacent. Right. Uh, for you, why was Congress the next step? Oh, wow. Well, as you mentioned, I started actually as an intern in a congressional office almost 30 years ago and went to a town hall meeting, met my congressmen, and heard they had internships, and really got this bug for being that problem solver and advocate for people. And I've worked my way up in his office and through his administration, and after about 30 or so years, um, life changes, you know. Uh, had gone through a divorce and all the challenges with that. So I know what a family might feel like when they're trying to raise teenagers on their own. Um, got back on my feet, 
got into a new job in the nonprofit sector, ended up falling in love again and moving to China and lived there for a few years and wrote a book while there about reinventing ourselves. And that's kind of where we are as a country too. You know, it's like asking the question, who are we and where are we going? And um, then unfortunately moved back to the States and my husband uh, unexpectedly died from a ruptured Achilles tendon. Blood clots went to his heart and lungs. And at 52, this healthy person passed away. And it just changed everything for me. It made me question, what is our purpose here? Why am I still here? What was all of this for? And I felt really sad and depressed and saw so many people. It was during 2014 that Charles passed. And I saw so many other people just feeling like either angry or sad, like maybe they lost a job or their home or a kid to gun violence, but it, it was just this feeling. And then on the national landscape, on the political side, it just didn't feel positive either. And I felt like I'm already down. I don't need people to bring me further down. And I decided, you know, I have nothing to lose and everything to give. I'm blessed. My husband put things in order for me, even not knowing. The year before he died, he had everything written out but I knew that a lot of other people were struggling. And I just decided I'm gonna run. I had never run for office, I had never run for anything. Um, and I had never been at a debate or had to raise that kind of money or anything. But I felt compelled for this time. I didn't know who was gonna be president, I didn't know any of that. But I felt like I've been blessed, a lot of people are struggling, a lot of people are afraid that their kids aren't going to be better off than they were, and I'm going to do it. And we ended up winning a, a, a six-way primary and a four-way general election and made history, double history, because of the people of Delaware. So the first woman to serve in Congress in Delaware and the first person of color. And, uh, and I love it. I love it. Every day I get up on fire and just feel like I'm in my purpose and I'm serving and and I want that feeling to spread and that's why again that's why I love being on AG because it's a committee where you can talk across and say we have things in common so let's remember those common bonds instead of the things that separate us so just blessed to be here mm -hmm. and when you're not here when you're not on the clock so to speak either here or back at the offices back home what are some things that you enjoy doing what are hobbies that you like to do in your free time oh boy that's so funny you should say that because i've been on the clock for, for it feels like a couple <laughs> years here but um i love i love writing um it's it's hard but i love to to write i think it connects us to our humanity i love dance you know i as a kid i was a dancer and and so whenever any kind of music comes on i love to dance um i, I love spending time with my family i mean we we just whether it's going to the movies or eating like we come together a lot i have my my parents are fortunately still with us and i have a son who's married and my daughter and they're in their late 20s early 30s and so I'm waiting for grandchildren. That's just a plug, but <laughs> but, but I, I love being with my family and just having that downtime. And and I mean and 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 I I'm a person of faith, so I I love to explore and understand you know my faith. I'm even part of a couple of bipartisan Bible studies here on 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 the hill, and uh, and it's great because you get a chance to, again, across the aisle, um, have something in common that, that you can share and talk about. And so, um, so yeah, those, I used to like to cook, but I haven't had the time to cook. Matter of fact, I, my hair is in, in, in Senegalese twists because I don't have time to do my hair. That's how busy we are here. <laughs> but um, but I, I, I love it, I love it. It's brought my joy back. Representative Lisa Blunt-Rochester from the state of Delaware, thanks for joining us. Thank you.